welcome back to the lectures in introductory quantum and molecular spectroscopy. So, let us get to the second part of the lecture 27 on operators, commutators, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now, let us look at the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. These are associated with matrices. You are all familiar with the operations of matrices. I believe you know how to multiply matrices and you know how to add and how to do simple operations on matrices. And if you have a square matrix for example, given by the elements A, B, C, D, then this is not the same thing as the determinant A, B, C, D. Okay. This is determinant. this is a matrix. The matrix is a specific ordering or an array and that is unique to this. This is not the same as the array A, C, B, D. On the other hand, a determinant like this is a number given by A, D minus B, C. Okay. Therefore, if you write this determinant A, C, B D, this is also A D minus B C. Okay. The determinants are equal, but the matrices are not equal. So, matrix represents specific arrays and therefore, we have a whole algebra, linear algebra associated with matrices. And the quantum mechanics has uh, in the early days been developed by two different groups of uh, researchers, the group following Schrodinger developed quantum mechanics as the solutions of differential equations and the mathematics associated with differential equations. That is what you saw. The group associated with Heisenberg, Max Born and others developed quantum mechanics as a linear algebra problem as a problem of the uh, matrix representing these operators as matrices and then worrying about the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of matrices. Today when you do quantum chemistry calculations on the computer 90, 95 percent of the time you would be solving the uh, molecular Schrodinger equation or the quantum chemistry problem as a matrix eigenvalue problem. Therefore, in this brief lecture let me introduce what are called the matrix eigenvalues and eigenvectors. This is the last segment of the quantum chemistry lecture that we have. The rest of the three weeks lectures would be on the molecular spectroscopy that we already started with. Okay. However, let us look at eigenvalues. So, we will start with a simple matrix A, B, C, D. The, if this is multiplied by a column or a vector, this is a square matrix. This is a column matrix or a column vector. If we can find an x, y such that when it multiplies a, b, c, d, it gives you a constant times x and y. That is the action of the matrix on the column x and y is the same as multiplying the column with a constant lambda. This equation is called the eigenvalue equation. First. In fact, finding out lambda and x, y such that this condition is satisfied is called the eigenvalue eigenvector problem and the lambda is called the eigenvalue and the column vector x, y is called the eigenvector associated with lambda. Let us do that for to elementary matrices 0, 1, 1, 0. This is a famous matrix, it is also known as the Pauli spin matrix in honor of uh, uh, Wolfgang Pauli contributor to the understanding of spins in quantum mechanics and later the 
general principle known as the exclusion, Pauli's exclusion principle and so on. Pauli spin matrix, uh, the X component of a spin a half vector, spin a half angular momentum vector. Let us find out the eigenvalues for this matrix. It is a very simple one. So, we will find out a column x y such that it gives you lambda times x y. Okay. So, the solution for this is very simple 0, 1, 1, 0 x y. If you expand this, it is, is equal to lambda x y gives you 0 into x 1 times y is equal to lambda x and then you get x is equal to lambda y. Okay. So, if you were to write this as a an equation, you have minus lambda x plus y is equal to 0, x minus lambda y is equal to 0 and that is writing this as a minus lambda 1, 1 minus lambda x y is equal to 0. This is a homogeneous linear equation in two variables. In two variables. Therefore, the solution for this equation exists only if the determinant minus lambda 1, 1 minus lambda is 0 because the variables are now linearly dependent. There is no constant associated with them. Therefore, x and y are, you need to know only one of them in order to get the other. Therefore, they are linearly dependent and a linearly dependent coefficient matrix must have its determinant 0. So, what is the determinant? It is lambda squared minus 1 that is equal to 0 or lambda is equal to plus or minus 1. Therefore, you have two solutions for the eigenvalue lambda and if you have two solutions for them, then essentially what it means is that there are two eigenvalues and two eigenvectors. So, you can call this as x 1 y 1 as lambda 1 of x 1 y 1, where lambda 1 is 1, the other is 0 1 1 0 x 2 y 2 is equal to lambda 2 x 2 y 2, where lambda 2 is equal to minus 1, which is the other eigenvalue. Okay. So, what is the solution? You have this is y 1 minus x 1 is equal to 0 for this first set. Okay. Lambda 1 is 1 and the second one is x 1 minus y 1 is equal to 0. So, you see that these two equations are not independent. One is the negative of the other. That is what is meant by saying that these equations are linearly, these quantities are linearly dependent. So, you have only the solution y 1 is equal to x 1. Therefore, you have to define one of them in order to get the other. So, the constant is undefined. The eigenvectors are always defined with what are known as the uh, normalized eigenvectors. We require the eigenvectors x, y to satisfy this requirement, namely the absolute square of x and the absolute square of y is equal to 1, I mean the square root or the square. These vectors are normalized to 1, therefore, if we make that requirement, then the solution, if you call x 1 to be some number like say c, then y 1 is also c, then the absolute square of x 1 square and the absolute square y 1 square is 2 c square that is equal to 1, therefore c is 1 by root 2. So, x is equal to therefore, the column vector x 1 y 1 or the eigenvector x 1 y 1 is 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2. Okay. The eigenvalue is lambda is equal to 1. So, let us highlight that. So, this is one solution to the eigenvalue problem that you have. It is easy 
to see that the second solution is in a similar way with the minus 1. So, you have 0, 1, 1, 0, x 2, y 2 is minus of x 2, y 2. You can see that this is nothing other than y 2 plus x 2 is equal to 0, x 2 plus y 2 is equal to 0. Therefore, x 2 is equal to minus y 2 and keeping in mind the normalization constant, you can immediately write x 2 y 2 as I 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2. It does not matter whether you write it this way or whether you write it minus 1 by root 2 1 by root 2, it does not matter because the overall sign is irrelevant to the conditions of the uh, eigenvector namely y 2 plus x 2 is equal to 0. If both y and x are changed by a sign, the equation is still valid. Therefore, the eigenvectors are defined with respect to a constant, arbitrary constant. They are defined with respect to an arbitrary phase or a sign. Therefore, we ensure that the signs are taken in a way that is convenient to us and it is consistent. So, the two eigenvectors that we have with the eigenvalue lambda 2 is equal to minus 1. You can see that the second eigenvector is this. And this matrix has only two eigenvalues and two eigenvectors. In general, a matrix which is n by n will have n eigenvalues and n eigenvectors. It is possible that some of the eigenvalues are the same. In such cases, we say that the eigenvalues are degenerate and determination of the eigenvectors is a bit tricky. One has to carefully go through the degeneracy requirement. Otherwise, a an operator, if it is represented by a matrix, that is a connection to this problem. If it is represented by a matrix, the eigenvalue for that operator is given by all the eigenvalues that the matrix will have. And we have a theorem which says that if the matrix is Hermitian, matrix, all the eigenvalues will be real. It is a quadratic equation that you will solve. You remember the quadratic equation you solved was lambda square minus 1 that is equal to 0. If you have another matrix in which the solution is to be solved by lambda square equal plus 1 is equal to 0, if that is the quadratic equation, you know that lambda is nothing but plus or minus i which is square root of minus 1. That is a complex eigenvalue or imaginary eigenvalue. Therefore, the fact that we have real eigenvalues for this particular matrix is associated with the fact that the matrix is a Hermitian matrix. What is a Hermitian matrix? I think all of you know that if I have a matrix and its elements are written as A, I, J, I th row and J th column for a Hermitian matrix A, J, I is equal to a i j star if the elements are complex. Therefore, you have to have something like this. If you have a 1, a 2, a 3, then the row must have a 1 1, a 1 2, a 1 3 to indicate that these are the rows and columns. Write this as a 1 2 star a 1 3 star, this is the requirement for a Hermitian matrix and a 2 2, a 2 3, this will be a 2 3 star, a 3 3 and so on. Okay. Therefore, the matrix element must satisfy this relation. By this requirement, you know that a i i is equal to a i i star. Therefore, all diagonal matrix elements all diagonal elements of the Hermitian matrix are real. Let us see one example of that for getting the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay. Let us consider the matrix 0 minus i i 0. This is again Pauli spin matrix for the 
spin angular momentum of a spin a half. in the y direction. So, if you have to look at the eigenvalues of this, it is 0 minus i, i 0, x y is equal to 0. You know that this is a Hermitian matrix, because the uh, a 1 2 is the complex conjugate of a 2 1. Therefore, we hope we get only real eigenvalues. So, if you have to write this, the eigenvalue equation as lambda times x comma y and the eigenvalue equation is lambda square i into minus i is plus 1, therefore, lambda square minus 1 is equal to 1, lambda is equal to plus or minus 1. Therefore, again the eigenvalues uh, are plus or minus 1 for this matrix and the eigenvectors in a similar way can be obtained. Let us do that now. 0 minus i, i 0, x 1, y 1 is equal to plus 1, x 1, y 1. So, this gives you the equation uh, minus x 1 minus i, y 1 is equal to 0 if you bring that here and likewise this gives you i x 1 minus y 1 is equal to 0. Remember this is the same as this equation because if you multiply this by minus i, you get this equation. You get this uh, minus i, no plus i. If you multiply this by plus i, you get minus and you get a minus i 1. So, these two are linearly dependent. So, you have x 1 is equal to minus i y 1. And now, you see why the absolute squares are important in the definition of the normalization. So, you can see that that will give you still 1 plus 1 times c square that is equal to 1 which means c is equal to plus or minus sorry c is equal to 1 by root 2. By root 2. Okay. So, the eigenvector is x 1 is minus i y 1. Therefore, if we choose uh, x 1 to be y 1 to be 1 by root 2, then x 1 is minus i by root 2. If you multiply both of them by i, you get i by root 2 and 1 by root 2. So, the column vector x 1 y 1 can be written as 1 by root 2 i by root 2. Okay. In a similar way, you can find out the second column x 2 y 2 for the eigenvalue lambda is equal to minus 1 as 1 by root 2 minus i by root 2 or if you want to keep the, I mean this is fine, this is the eigenvector, this is the eigenvector. So, these are the eigenvalue eigenvectors associated with a simple 2 by 2 matrix. What is the quantum mechanics? The quantum mechanics is that h psi is equal to e psi is an eigenvalue equation. E is the eigenvalue. Psi is the eigenvector. Now, the solution of this therefore, requires h to be expressed as a matrix. In what form? In what basis? There has to be a basis in which h has to be written as an as a matrix. Now, remember the particle in the box problem in which we had psi of x written as c x square into l minus x square. We had given that and expressed to this sum over m c n root 2 by l sin n pi x by l. Therefore, for any arbitrary eigenfunction, 
it is possible for us to express this in terms of unknown coefficients and some basis functions which have very specific properties like the orthogonality and the normalization. Uh, if we have such a set, then the Hamiltonian can be expressed as a matrix in that basis. So, the general form of the Hamiltonian matrix would be, write it in terms of functions, if we use phi 1, phi 2, phi 3, etc. as the basis, then the Hamiltonian matrix would be integral phi 1 star h phi 1 d tau, that will be the 1 1 element h 1 1. Let me write that later. The element phi 1 star h phi 2 d tau as the second element phi 1 star h phi 3 d tau. This is the matrix representation for the Hamiltonian in the basis chosen as the basis with the requirement that phi 1 star phi 1 is equal to d tau is equal to 1 for all the other you can call it as i and i is 1 to n. And if i is not equal to j, then the integral phi i star phi j d tau is 0. Like the particle in the one dimensional box where if this is n and this is m, the n wave function and this is the m wave function, then they are 0 if n is not equal to m. So, there are examples that you have studied, but this is a general uh, formalism for quantum mechanics. The Hamiltonian matrix can be expressed in this form. The second rho will be phi 2 star h phi 1 d tau, phi 2 star h phi 2 d tau, phi 2 star h phi 3 d tau and so on. And therefore, if you have an rho i, if you have rho i, then the elements will be phi i star h phi 1 d tau, phi i star h phi 2 d tau and so on. Okay. So, this is the matrix representation for the Hamiltonian. The choice of the matrix representation is uh, decided by the ease with which we can calculate these integrals, all these quantities. And then if the matrix is very large and if the basis function set is very large, quantum chemistry tells us that we can, there are procedures for calculating the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of such large matrices through numerical methods and by using computational chemistry and using high speed computers and so on. Therefore, the mechanics that you have studied with the help of the basic uh, differential equations for the particle in the 1D box, 2D box and so on. When you want to study them for more complex problems, it is always easier to find a matrix representation for the Hamiltonian operator whose eigenvalues we are after and then use that matrix representation also to write all the operators as matrices and then look for eigenvalues and eigenvectors of these operators, the Hamiltonian and other operators and so on. Therefore, the process is of a differential equation turned over into a solution of the linear algebra and the basic ideas were explained here with the help of a 2 by 2 matrix where a spin a half system which has only two states plus and minus states as you would have studied uh, in your school. The two states are represented uh, in the operator form for the spin half as a 2 by 2 matrices. We used two of them, but in general the algebra is very similar. It can be extended to n dimensions and many dimensions and today's computational chemistry programs basically use a program called the Gaussian which does this calculation very, very efficiently and it has been developed by uh, thousands of scientists working collaboratively and it is a commercial program also many, many computational chemists use that to solve the eigenvalues and eigenvector problems of quantum chemistry. Therefore, this is the starting point for understanding quantum chemistry in a much more detailed way 
and we will relate that to a next course at some other time when I uh, again give lectures on the advanced, slightly more advanced methods. But at this point, we will stop with the quantum chemistry methods and from the next lecture onwards, we will continue to the spectroscopy. And I request you to review lectures number. In the first week, there were three lectures on spectroscopy. Please quickly review them and then continue with the next week's lectures on spectroscopy. We will start with some of the elementary concepts in molecular spectroscopy in the next lecture. Until then, thank you very much.